Nancy Pearl once wrote, each time I begin a new book, there's the very real chance that this is the book that I will fall in love with. Who isn't encouraged by the perennial possibility of such love waiting for us on the very next page? Like most people, I first heard Nancy Pearl when I heard her voice on the radio recommending books for NPR. She was funny, she was warm, and most of all, she was enthusiastic. She immediately reminded me of my first librarian whose voice drew my classmates and me through comedies and adventures around the world and across the galaxy. Later, I would learn that Nancy's enthusiasm for literature came from experience. After all, this was someone who titled her memoir, Girl Discovers Reading, Then Discovers Life. Growing up in Detroit, Nancy found the Parkman Branch Public Library offered a refuge from a difficult home. As she puts it, she was rescued from despair by books, libraries, and librarians. It's not too much of an exaggeration to say that reading saved my life. At a young age, she discovered that books allowed her both to find herself and to escape herself. By the time she was 10, she knew she wanted to be a librarian. A self-described readaholic, she started working at the Seller Bookshop in Detroit, even before she graduated from high school. She eventually earned a master's degree in library science from the University of Michigan. And from there, her involvement with books kept evolving. She began her career as a children's librarian in Detroit and then moved to the Tulsa City County Library and then to the Seattle Public Library, where she became the executive director of the Washington Center for the Book. And it was there in Seattle that Nancy had a typically audacious Nancy-sized idea. In 1998, she started a book club that embraced the whole population of the city. Her program called, If All of Seattle Read the Same Book, exemplifies the breadth of Nancy's vision and the depth of her faith and the power of literature. That program has since been replicated in every state of America and around the world. It's a program based on the increasingly essential idea that people meeting in a public place to talk about a book could learn to appreciate the book and each other. I believe she once said, there is an opportunity for reading and discussion to help make the world a better place. What could be more necessary at a moment when our society feels intolerably fractured and libraries find themselves the latest battleground of the culture wars? At a time when too many people are alarmed that a book might disturb their certainties, Nancy writes, I read to encounter new worlds, new ways of looking at our world. I read to enlarge my horizons, to gain wisdom, to experience beauty, to understand myself better, and for the pure wonderment of it all. In 2004, Nancy retired from her post as executive director of the Washington Center for the Book. And though she is not a person given to mockery, she has made a mockery of retirement. Following up on the success of her indispensable reading guide called Book Lust, she went on to publish more Book Lust and Book Crush for children and teens, and her first novel, George and Lizzie. She also wrote Book Lust to Go, recommended books for travelers, vagabonds, and dreamers. It's a book that demonstrates what Emily Dickinson meant when she said, there is no frigate like a book to take us lands away. And perhaps that's been the thesis of all Nancy's work. Throughout her career, she's been an astute critic, a reader's advocate, someone who understands how thirsty people are to find books they'll love. And to hear her is to know that her vocation is inspired by good humor. It's no coincidence that she was chairman of the fiction committee of the year Andrew Sean Greer won a Pulitzer Prize for his book, Less, reminding us that a comic novel can be a great work of art. Nancy's voice on radio, television, and in her own best-selling books resonates so powerfully because she represents the ideal of the librarian. An activist for the unbridled pleasure of reading She's not a guardian of the treasures. She's a farmer of the orchard. I've never wavered, she writes, in my belief that being a librarian is one of the best and noblest careers that anyone could have. And few people have ever pursued that profession with such infectious verve, intelligence, and delight. Reading, she says, has always brought me pure joy. And her joy has redounded to us for decades. And so, Shh. It is my honor to introduce the recipient of the 2021 Literarian Award for Outstanding Service to the American Literary Community, Nancy Pearl. Thank you, Ron, for that lovely introduction. 
I want to thank the National Book Foundation from the bottom of my heart for this award. You know, I feel as though my entire life has now been validated. And to find myself in such notable company as previous winners, such as Dave Eggers, Dr. Maya Angelou, and Terry Gross, is beyond wonderful. When you've gotten to be the age I am, there are so many people who've made a difference in your life, people who've helped me become the person I am today, that if I named all of them, I'd far exceed my time limit. So here are just a few. My husband, Joe, who's made my reading life possible. Ms. Frances Whitehead, the children's librarian at the Parkman branch of the Detroit Public Library, who took this miserably unhappy eight-year-old girl that I was and gave me the world through the books she recommended, including J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, Lois Lenski's Strawberry Girl, and Esther Forbes' Johnny Tremaine. Ms. Whitehead showed me that books are places where you can both find yourself and lose yourself. I knew when I was 10 that I wanted to be a librarian, just like Miss Whitehead, so I could give to other children what she gave me. Miss Glenn, the Halley Elementary School librarian, who made sure I read Helen Gannett's My Father's Dragon and Eleanor Cameron's The Wonderful Flight to the Mushroom Planet. Ken and Peggy Tracy, who hired me to work at their Yorktown Alley bookstore in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Craig Buto, who brought me to the Seattle Public Library from Tulsa by creating a job for me that required me to do what I loved and did best, talking about books and the pleasures of reading and not having to do anything I wasn't good at, which was basically everything else. Craig gave me the time, space, and encouragement to create the If All Seattle Read the Same Book program, which has grown throughout the world into all of those one city, one book projects. Gary Luke, then an editor at Sasquatch Books here in Seattle, who called me one day and asked me to write a book about good books to read and named it Book Lust. Mark Palo, who used me as the model for the librarian action figure thus immortalizing me in what I'm pretty sure is non-biodegradable plastic. Sunshine Eisen, a cultural affairs officer at the US Embassy in Sarajevo, who came up with the idea of having all the teenagers in the country, whether they be Muslim, Croat, or Serb, read and discuss Sherman Alexie's absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian. And she asked me to come to Bosnia-Herzegovina to work with librarians and teachers who would be discussing this book with those teens. My experience there solidified my belief that reading and then discussing a book can be a small but important step in helping heal a fractured nation or a community in conflict. And lastly, I want to thank all the writers, editors, and publishers whose books have given me so much joy through the years. I am, I believe, the first librarian to win this award, and I'm dedicating it to all the librarians who do such essential work for their communities. One of the foundational principles of the public library is that it is a truly egalitarian institution available free to everyone, regardless of ethnicity, race, religion, age, or economic status. And as such, it is a democratizing and unifying force in our society, which is needed now more than ever before. Thank you again to the National Book Foundation for this great honor.